Hey everybody, Gavin Syme here, and today I'm going to show you guys how I edit a black and white in a more advanced manner, going beyond Lightroom, get into Photoshop, using the new Blackroom actions, and ultimately how I can combine that with Loomis. In fact, the latest updates of both Loomis and Blackroom, I did more work on integrating these two systems together so you can edit your black and white with Blackroom, but you can also control your tones and your zones really precisely with Loomis. And if some of you are just familiar with Blackroom and you see the tone map and you're like, okay, I can see my zones and tones, but what do I do with that? This is for you. And if you're a Loomis user and you have Blackroom, I think you're going to like this because we've kind of made these work really smoothly together. So let me actually go straight in and not waste time. Let's get started. So we're in Lightroom. I did a video last week talking about how I use black and white with Silver 4, but also use Blackroom. So I'm not going to go too deep into that today, but I have a photo I took in Centro the other day. And just the huge amounts of birds, it was just really cool. And the clock tower and the light, it was really cool. So we'll grab this one. I just did a simple conversion with silver. And I could do all kinds of conversions with silver here that would probably look really good. But like I've said a lot of times with my best images, if I take them into Photoshop, I'm going to get more. I'm going to use the mod that restores the color. So it leaves all the tone controls I've done in Silver 4, but it restores my color because when I go into Photoshop to use Blackroom, I'm going to have more control if I maintain that color information. So I'm just going to Control E or Command E and open that in Photoshop. Let's drop right into Photoshop here and I have this image. I also have another one that I actually just opened directly in color. I didn't do a conversion in Silver. So here is our image. Now, if we look up here, you can see I have Blackroom and Loomis and Emulsion. We're going to focus on these two today. And we're going to convert these to black and white with Blackroom. Let me actually go up here. Let me show you guys how I do this is I'm going to switch to button mode. So you can organize and drag around your actions in normal mode. And then when you have things the way you like it, you switch to button mode and you get all the nice color coding and everything that's inside Loomis. Now, if I go in here, and I have my actions. And you can see I have Blackroom first. Uh, with the latest versions of Blackroom 1.1 and Loomis 2.5, there's just been subtle adjustments to make things integrate, to make things run faster, but also color coding and stuff. You can see here that the first action of each set is right at the top, the starting action. So if I run the Blackroom, it builds the Blackroom base, the base conversion, the folder where everything goes into. Likewise with Loomis, you can see right down here, the live map, this starts, the Loomis action. So it makes it kind of easier to see the action, see where Blackroom stops and Loomis starts and things like that. So you can organize. I've refined the color coding, the organization, but that done a lot of little things behind the scenes as well to just make it run smoother and to make sure that when you run Blackroom, it's smoothly integrating when you then run Loomis effects on top of it. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Regardless of whether you're a Blackroom or a Loomis or both user, I think this is gonna help you out. Okay, so I've run Blackroom, I got a basic conversion, right? If you've watched the videos on using Blackroom, you know that I can go up and I could use the Foundry presets or anything I wanted here. I could use mixes, I could do tone curves, I could do black and white fillers filters, and I could do anything I wanted with this. So for example, let's say I do a street shot curve. All right, it's going to add my street shot curve, and it's putting it right here in the Blackroom folder, right where it belongs. And I can control the opacity and things like that to get it what I want. We're looking good because this image has great tone. And of course, great images, great light. It starts in the camera. It finishes in the dark room or in the computer or in the black room. All right, so here we are. What can I do with this? If you've been using Blackroom, you know up here you can show the zones map. And this is showing you your Ansel Adams and Fred Archer zone scale from zone 0 being black clipped to zone 10. And it gives you this visual map so that you can better understand what you're looking at in your image, where your tones are. So you can see we have a wide range of tones. Our clock tower is all the way up in zone 9, and our birds and our shadows are all the way down in zone 0. So we actually have pretty much the full tonal range in this image, which is great, especially in a black and white. It's great in any image, but especially in a black and white because tonal range is good. Sometimes we think, oh, I want dynamic range, and that means crushing everything to midtones, like four, five, six, and seven, right? That's where people tend to go wrong with dynamic range. Dynamic range is being able to, about being able to capture all the light within a scene and then put it in the, in the contrast range that you desire. 
And that's where Loomis comes in because we can move the tones around however we want. So let's take a look at this then and see. I can hide the zones map or show the zones map. Now in Blackroom, we just have that tool. I didn't put all the Loomis tools into Blackroom because it would have cluttered up Blackroom and you might not need that every time. And Loomis is already a product that we make that works really good and it's really well refined. It's at version two now and it works really well. Now this is a live map. So if I show this zones map and I adjust a curve, I can actually see in real time how that's affecting my tones, right? So that's a tip for you Blackroom users that are new to the Loomis live map. And this, this ability to control zones specifically when we first launched Loomis didn't really exist in the luminosity masking tools and stuff like that. And after we introduced it, people started catching on saying, hey, this zone system thing, this is good stuff. And it is, the zone system is amazing. And different companies have started adding it now into their products. And you know what, that's good because the zone system is really powerful even on digital. Obviously it has uh, extensive use in film. And if you're developing film and all that kind of stuff, and we talk about zones a lot in my exposed workshop, there's more videos about that on this channel and also in my workshops. But right now we're looking at these zones. So five being middle gray, 10 being clipped white. And you can see here, if you look at the zone scale, there's zone 10, and then there's the top 20% of zone 10, which we'll show is pure white and the same with black. So what I try to do, if I'm trying to get a full tonal range is I'll actually try to get all the way down to zone zero. You can see this is zone zero, but it's not truly clipped into black. That's why it shows as red, not as black. And the same with my zone nine and 10. You'll see that in a minute. Okay, so let's hide the zones map and that's what we can do in Blackroom. Here's the beauty. We can now go down to Loomis. So I've ran the Blackroom conversion and I've put a few elements into it and it looks good, right? I put, a, I put a street shot curve, I got the base mods and everything that's in there. And I could do more to this in Blackroom, but I'm gonna show you that in a minute. I can now go to Loomis. Now, you know if you're a Loomis user that just like Blackroom, you start Loomis with this red start action, which builds your live map. However, if you're doing Blackroom, you don't have to do that because Blackroom already builds the Loomis total map as part of Blackroom. And you can just go straight in and use Loomis without building anything else. Let's say I go in here and I show the map. And by the way, you see, we start the Loomis actions. You see the show map and the hide map. It does the same thing. You're showing and you're hiding the map. Let's look at our map though. This clock tower is really a feature. These birds of course are amazing. These add so much to this image, right? But what I wanna do first is I wanna pop the clock tower and up here a little bit. So I'm going to take, and I'm gonna select my zone eights and nines and Let's just do it. Let's go to Loomis and select zone eight and select zone nine. And you can see that as this, I do this, as I click different zones, it's adding. It's not selecting only one zone. If I click a zone and then click another zone, it's additive. So now you can see that by this green overlay that's laid on here, that I have these zones. And you can select this regardless of whether the map is visible or hidden, okay? So in fact, if I hide the map, it hides the map, but my selection remains the same. Now, so I don't have too harsh of edges, I'm gonna go down to the feather selection in Loomis. I'm just gonna feather by 25, okay? So you can see that I have my little selection in here and it's feathered and good. Great, now what do I wanna do with it? Well, at this point, I can run any action within Loomis. So if I say I wanna lighten this up, I'm gonna run the lighten curve and it's gonna put a curve and it's gonna auto mask it only to that clock tower. And you can see it's not affecting a lot, but it's giving us control over the microtones. Okay, now I can double click this curve and I can do whatever I want with it, but it's only going to be affecting the area I've selected. So I can make the clock tower way too white and clip it out or make it contrasty. I can drop the blacks. Anything I do to this curve is only applied to the zones. So unlike luminosity masking where you have to go through and you kind of got a gazillion layers being added and all this stuff, I can just select any individual layer and apply what I want to it. So I can do that in reverse as well though. I could say, I'm gonna make a curve layer or a levels layer. I'm gonna make a levels layer and I'm going to make the blacks blacker, right? But I don't wanna make all the blacks blacker. So I'm just gonna turn that off for now and look at my map. Show the map right here. And here is my map. Let me turn the levels off though and see my map without that extreme levels layer. I want my birds though to be a little bit darker. 
but not pure black. So let me tweak with my levels. I'm going to add a little contrast to my birds without clipping them all into pure black. So I'm going to go about here. Now what I want to do is I want to limit this layer to only what I want. Meaning, let's turn the layer off for a minute and look. I want to take this, these tones, zone 1, 2, and 3, but not zone 0. I don't want to make zone 0 any darker because it's already dark. I'm going to take zone 1 and 2, actually, because I'm going to feather it. So I'm just going to go here. You can see that's the color of the birds. It's showing us that map. Now I can hide this map just for reference. I can hide the map and still do the same thing. I'm going to go here. I'm going to take zone 1 and select it. And you can see it's going to auto-select all the zone 1s. And yes, it's including other areas as well, and that's fine. And I'm going to take zone 2. Okay? That looks good. Now I'm going to feather that by 25. Okay? You don't have to feather it, but generally it's going to make things cleaner. Okay, so now what's going to happen? I've got this levels layer here that I haven't done anything with. I'm going to turn it back on because I don't want it applying to everything. So what I'm going to do is I can just mask add selection to layer right here. So basically, if I make a selection and then run one of these blue actions or anything else for that matter, any of these other color lumas or more advanced effects, it's going to run that action and automatically apply the selection I've made. But if I make a selection, I can also apply it to any existing layer. I could apply it to a curve within Black Room. I can apply it to a curve that I've manually made like we did this one. And so what do I need to do? Here's my levels curve. I'm just gonna go here and click Add selection to layer, which I've cleaned up in version 2.5 to make it a little more efficient. And you can see now this mask is only affecting the areas that I've selected, bringing in our rich blacks. But let's look at our map overlay. We're still looking good on our tones. We have a tiny bit of black clipping here, but I don't think that's bad. In this case, it's okay to have a little bit of clipping on the blacks. I try to avoid pure white clipping on the whites because when you print it, sometimes it's too stark. But especially for a black and white image, let me hide this, those rich blacks are good. So this is looking great. Now the cool thing here, all of this, if you look at the layers we're building, right? You can see we have the Loomis total map. And as I run Loomis actions, it's just working with it and it works. But you can see down here, we still have all the black room stuff. So what I've done, and this is something I worked on in the update, is making sure that Loomis and black room aren't interfering with each other. So if I add a black room effect, it just kind of works. And if I add a Loomis effect, it just kind of works. So what I mean by that is, let's say I want to go back up to Black Room. I run these actions here in Loomis. I've got all these different layers. I've got my main Black Room conversion right here, which converted us to black and white. But let's say I want to run something more like, like Ansel Light, for example. I can run this foundry action, which combines a whole bunch of black room actions together, and it doesn't interfere with anything else that I've done. So it's adding that atmospheric action to this image, and it's just working. It just brings it together. Just bear in mind, if I run Luminous, for example, and these purple actions down here that do, I don't want to say destructive because they're layer-based, but they do pixel-based layers. Okay, so if I zoom in on that, you can see that I've put this Luminous effect on top. And it works great, but this is why you want to do your black room first, then your tones using curves and anything like that, exposure, levels, all that kind of stuff with Luminous. And then if you want any other more intense effects, more pixel-based effects, like are in Luminous, like are in Alchemist, put those on top. If you're doing merged layer effects, put those on top once you've finished with your tone. Do your tone effects first. So if you're doing a black and white, you run black room, then you can build your Loomis effects on top of that without any interference with each other. And then when you're all done, if you want to do extra layers or a burn and dodge layer or something, just put that on top of everything. I hope, I hope I'm coming across simple enough on that. So here we have our entire look, all the atmosphere that goes with it. And frankly, it looks pretty good. Let's do a show map overlay. And you can see now we're pushing up into zone, barely into zone 10 on the clock tower and all the way down to zone zero. So we, we have a full 10 stop range. And what's that doing? Well, in this case, it's giving us this really rich, contrasty atmospheric image. And in this case, that's what I'm going for. Here's one I took up of the Cascades in the Huasteca jungles. And let's first run Black Room. 
Now, I might want to crop this off a little on the right, and I'll do that for the sake of this video, but normally I would actually edit the entire video. I'm going to go more for a square crop on this, stopping this tree here and showing a little of the foliage on the right, okay, like this. You may hit that crop and that's okay, but normally I would crop, I would edit the full image and only crop at the end when I go to export. Okay, let's actually go, and I'm just gonna show you the screen for a second. We're gonna zoom in so we can see this nice and big, and let's run Blackroom Master. Okay, so again, if I'm doing black and white, I've edited a more advanced black and white in Photoshop, I'll start with Blackroom. I then don't need to run the Luma Start tool because we already have the tonal map. Black, Blackroom builds it in, and without any extra add-ons or hassle, we can just use Lumist. Okay, so I'm sort of first going to run this. I want to bring some contrast into this, so I'm actually going to run uh, the Ansel Light Foundry, which again, the Foundry actions are a mix of just a whole bunch of the other Blackroom actions combined together without having to think about it, which is nice. Okay, so here is my Blackroom effect. Let's look at my master effect here, which Blackroom is all organized in this one folder so I can see the intensity of what I'm doing with this. Okay, this looks pretty good. And what I want to do now is experiment with some traditional black and white filters on this because we have a lot of color here. So I'm going to put like an orange 21, but that darkens down my water. Okay, so I'm going to delete that right here in the layers. Let's try and do just a yellow 12, a little bit too subtle. Let's try and do something a little more intense like a blue. And sometimes I really am just going to experiment with these curves and layers to try and bring out my tones in the way I want a little bit more. Uh, let's do the deep green mix. And that I like because now I'm really bringing shadows into those greens. And that's really cool, but I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, right to about 50%. So you can see that I'm darkening my greens while still maintaining my water and things like that. But I want... I want to bring the focus in on the falls. I feel like there's not enough focus on the falls. So the first thing I'm going to do here is in dark black room, I'm going to do the deep vignette plate. So that'll just add a vignette plate here and darken my edges, but I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I don't want to lose too much detail there. Now I'm going to show my map. I'm going to show my map and we're going to look in Loomis. We have a lot of shadow and what I want to do is bring up the highlight of the falls and these two trees here to bring out our focus points. So where do those fall? You can see if we look at our map right here, that we the water is covering a pretty wide range from about zone three to about zone seven. But most of the rest of the image is darker. So I'm gonna actually take zone four through zone seven. So I'm gonna go zone four, and I'm just gonna add these individually, zone four, zone five, and it's a little slow because I'm recording and I got all this stuff going at the same time. And we're going to go up to zone seven. And so you can see based on our selection guide, this green dotted map that comes up, which is really handy because it shows you what you have selected. It's better than marching ants. And that's another nice feature of Loomist. Now I'm just going to feather this by, by 25. And you can feather more. There's actually a feather after effect. So if I go down here, I can feather by 25 right here, and it'll feather my current selection. But if after I apply the mask, I want to feather more, I can just use the feather current mask button to add more softness to that feather. Okay, so now I have feathered this, and what I'm really going to do is just bring up my exposure on this. So I'm going to do exposure up 5.5, that is, not five stops. And you can see what I've done here is I've just brought a half stop up on the trees and the falls which actually makes a profound difference. But if I double click my exposure layer, I can actually go up here and I can tweak it wherever I want. Now, you, it might be better to use a curves layer here because I'd have a little more control over highlights, but this is actually working pretty well because I'm able to really bring out the richness of these falls. And you can see this is only affecting kind of the highlights of the foliage, my two trees, and my falls, which is exactly what I want. If I look at my map again, let's show the map overlay. You can see now my falls are pushing up into zone 10 and still down into zone three and four and looking really good overall while we're still retaining a ton of shadow in the surrounding area. And now I could go into Loomist and I could say, well, let's put a burn and dodge layer on this and let's come in and do some more specifics, right? I could add other effects to this, but for now I'm going to keep this simple because I think it just works. Now remember, everything's still intact. So if you look at our layers, 
everything's still there. We've done our exposure with Loomist. And sometimes you might think, oh, well, you know, we didn't do a lot with Loomis, but we did do a lot because it not only allows us to see the tones, we can directly manipulate those tones that we see in the live map. But also when combined with Blackroom, I have everything still intact and I can still control all the Blackroom settings. So I can go up here, for example, and change the master mix in Blackroom to dial back only my Blackroom effects. Of course, that's not affecting the layers that I added with Loomis because those are above the Blackroom group. So I could change Blackroom master effect to 50, 75, or 100. So what I'm getting at here is that when you mix Blackroom with Loomis, you can just use Blackroom as you normally would. You run it, you convert to black and white, you can add your effects, you can add your combo effects, your color filters, your black and white filters, all of that kind of stuff, and make this great black and white. And then you can combine that in stride and this is the really cool part, guys. You can combine that in Stribe with Loomis, which is a very specific tool that allows us to control the tone values of each zone in the scale individually or as a group, and then apply those to layers. And then if in Loomis, when you wrap up, you wanna do Loomis, uh, some of the Loomis built-in actions that are more advanced pixel-based effects and things like that, or glows or atmospheric effects and things like that, you can do so. Or you can use Loomis and just be using that and then later add another atmospheric effect. Like let's say I wanted to add a grain. I can go right in here now and add a grain. From here, let's do Grain Raw, Cla Raw Classic Level 2 right here and it put it right here in this purple layer. So we're remaining non-destructive. This is the really cool thing. A lot of actions you may have used and you've probably experienced this. The, you run actions and they're basically just merging everything into a layer. And then you run another one and it merges everything into a layer. Some of them outright flatten your image. And what I've really worked hard in over the years is not only to maintain layers and do that vertical editing style, but now even more so with these newer products like Blackroom, like Loomis, they're directly integrated. So you can actually use them both side by side and you don't even have to hassle. I think this works really good and I want you guys to tell me what you think. This is how I do advanced black and white editing and everything I've shown you here. Yes, you could go into Photoshop and manually build layers and manually mask and manually do atmospheric effects and I could spend hours tinkering around or I could use a tool like Blackroom, like Loomis, that's using the native tools we already have in Photoshop without having to open a plugin and flatten the layers and do all the stuff and the steps that come with that. We're using our native tools and it's using them in the way Photoshop intended you to use them, which is building up layers, working non-destructively. And then when you're done, if you want to merge everything into one layer to save file space, you're good to go. That's how I'm using Blackroom and Loomist side by side. Make sure you download the latest versions that were updated like a week ago. It's Blackroom 1.1 and Loomis 2.5. Uh, starting with those, we've got our integration really tight between those, and I'm going to keep maintaining development between those because they go hand in hand, those beautiful black and white conversions of Blackroom with the tone controls of Loomis, then combined with everything else that you want to do in Photoshop to your heart's content to get your perfect black and white image. Let me know if this was useful, if I was all over the place, if I was clear. I'm trying to make these videos better and better and not too long, but sometimes like this, when we're getting into different image edits and more advanced stuff, they go on for a little while. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Head over to the site, simefx.com if you want to check out these products. And yeah, have a good weekend.